Well, that's no good. We gotta see what's going on with this freezer. frost issue but what I have noticed though is a lot of these low profile coils apparently in this application they do have a little bit of uh, droplets forming only because these low profile coils don't come with fan delays that's usually a, a, a separate item it looks like we got a little bit of frost on the coil so that's good Looks to be relatively even. I got a nice steady stream of water coming off of that. Oh yeah, the floor is nice and wet. Oh, let's see. Yeah, that seems relatively even. Get a I know you guys can't really see this, but up inside here, looking at the inside of the evaporator, it looks relatively clean. I'm going to get a better look here in a little bit, but just for those that don't know, air goes up into the evaporator, through the fans, and then out this side. So, Alright guys, let me get some tools and a ladder. Let's see what the deal is. All right, we are up above the walk-in cooler and the walk-in freezer. Over here, they keep their tankless water systems. I don't know if you guys can see that, but let's see if I get a good picture of that. There we go. Got a nice steady stream of water pouring out of that, out of that tankless system. So my initial thought is, all this water dripping down the the plastic bolts into the evaporator froze up, and obviously it would. Uh, cause airflow to be a problem so it wouldn't cool anymore. But we're going to give her the old big picture here. So get some pictures of this, send it off to the facility manager, and we'll get up on the roof and double check our condenser. Man, there's a ton of water that was just trapped inside there. You'll notice right back here behind this pump, we're just shooting water out of there. So this is about where it goes from a refrigeration problem to a plumbing problem. So I'm gonna get the facility guy on the phone and uh, see if he wants me to shut down his hot water. They have a secondary system right there, so it's really not that big of a deal. We'll just uh, shut this one down so it's not leaking anymore. And then I will continue on to uh, big picture this girl. I mean the condensing unit upstairs. Just to uh, verify we're good. Alright guys, so. We got the water shut off. No longer spraying. See, so shut off right down there. Again, they have a secondary system. So they'll be fine until they can get a plumber in here and fix or replace this. And in the meantime... Um, I'm going to actually get a mop up here, see if I can get some of this water to uh, stop going down these bolts that are holding our evaporator in, because what it's doing is it's just tracking down these little bolts here, dripping right into our evaporator coil, right along the sides of it, and of course freezing up. Now I'm 90% sure that's our only issue, but of course we are going to verify a couple other things 
get up on the roof, just give it a visual check, and then uh, watch our temperature drop. Apparently moments before I got here, the staff had cleared all the ice off of the uh, evaporator coil. So it was about 30 degrees before I got here apparently. It's down to 22 right now, so we're gonna continue to watch it. This right here is the aftermath of uh, the manager cleaning the ice off the evaporator coil. Luckily, they didn't use a screwdriver, so the evaporator coil still works. No holes in it, no nothing. Huh. That's a fun noise. Hmm. Let's see. I think that guy needs to come out here and do something. All right, guys. So, it took me a little bit to uh, get to this point because I was hounded with phone calls from A Team Adam from the HVAC Overtime Show. He just wanted to quiz me on boilers. He had a question about boilers and he knew that I knew a ton about boilers, so he called me and I got him through it. Anyway, we're all gauged up. The only reason I'm gauging up to this system is just to verify everything. And it looks like we literally just pumped down and shut off. Well, snap. Anyways, I was gonna show you that my, uh, my low side and my high side suction pressure were right about where it needed to be. My superheat's probably going off the charts now. Subcooling's 10. Superheat's about 25. It was about 25, I mean. It's up to about 30 right now. But again, that's compressor superheat. Keep that in mind. And my suction line goes down into a, uh, a heated space up above. Well, it's kind of a complicated situation, but this restaurant shares ceiling space with a restaurant next to it. And the suction line has somewhat of a long run, anyway. And also the top of the freezer is flooded with water, but um, yeah, we are looking good. So I'm gonna go downstairs, just verify that box temp, and then uh, I'm gonna get off this snowy roof. Let me bring it back real quick. I forgot a couple things. So real quick, I don't know if you noticed, but my suction line dryer, it's garbage. Um, I have addressed that with the facility before. They uh, don't really want to do anything with it now. I assume when something major breaks, then they'll finally allow me just to straight pipe it and get that out of there. Uh, also, I double checked my headmaster. We are properly um, bypassing our condensing coil. Uh, sight glass, nice and full. The other thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna crank this over into, oh, by the way, I've also been watching this. Uh, even though I don't suspect that this was an issue, I have been watching it. So before I get off the roof, I'm gonna crank this over into defrost real quick. That is kind of sticking right there. All right, well, we got decent amps decent amperage going through our heaters but even though this thing appeared to be moving and I didn't time it I didn't set up a stopwatch but this is this is rather tight yeah I don't like that at all see this could have been a callback but yeah we're definitely changing that thing so let's shut her down and swap her out I'm sure you super sleuths noticed in this pink package down at the bottom here there wasn't a, a secondary defrost clock. Now, normally I don't install just random parts that I find stuffed inside of units, but I just got off the phone with the facility technician who uh, normally takes care of this location, and he did indeed leave a spare one up here because he said he frequently changes those. So yeah, he left a spare one in here. So. I'm going to use his defrost clock, slap that guy in there real quick, and move it along. Shoot out a defrost clock. I'm pretty sure there's a police chase in the background. Maybe I 
just go over and throw my screwdriver down the road and see if I can get the driver. The local curious HVAC guy stopped the police chase with his Lennox 9 in 1 screwdriver. Well guys, we are at temperature. Still a little bit of ice on the floor. A little bit up there as well. So anyway, the little droplets of water up there. Again, these units don't have a proper fan delay, so that's why this unit is set up for four 45 minute defrosts and it just ends defrost on termination. But I told the manager since this box is already empty, they should just shut down, let it thaw, get all that water off the floor, any water that's in the seams up on the ceiling, because there's still a little bit of water that's gonna drip down, so. But that's all I can do for today. Hope you guys got something out of it. I'll see you in the next one, all right?